Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I want to do a monthly favorites or fashion favorites video, talk about some clothing pickups or just clothes I've been wearing a lot recently. And then for this one, instead of doing a movie or TV favorites thing, since I haven't really been watching a lot of uh, television or movies recently, I did a Q&A on my Instagram. So I'll be answering a few of your guys' questions. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of my music favorites for this past month as well. Now that summer is quickly approaching, I realized that I didn't really have a lot of uh, like basic graphic tees I could wear on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of the tees I have right now, I usually flip inside out so there's no graphic because I don't like the graphic on them. And then some just don't have a graphic at all. Like I have a lot of vintage blank tees with like holes and rips in them and I wear those pretty frequently, but sometimes I do want like a graphic like this. So I actually picked up a few vintage or graphic tees I wanna show you guys. One of them I'm still waiting for, unfortunately, but I'll just show you guys what it looks like anyway. The first one is actually this tee I'm wearing right now. This is a vintage Soundgarden t-shirt. Super sick graphic on the front. I actually wanted to buy the same t-shirt like three years ago. I remember it was like summer of 2016. I wanted to buy this shirt, but it was way out of my price range at the time. So I'm glad I finally have it. I really, really like that front graphic. Very unique. Not really something you see too often on graphic tees nowadays. It says Soundgarden right there with like a guy like holding his head and his mind's kind of like exploding. And the backside it says black hole sun with a really cool like sunflower slash sun graphic. Actually, hopefully you guys are able to hear me. Single stitch sleeves, you know it's vintage and it's kind of like a faded black. It's like the ideal wash I look for in uh, vintage tees. I believe we got this one for $150, which is really, really expensive for a t-shirt, but this is like kind of a rare t-shirt and one that's very sought after. And another band tee or vintage tee that I got that I posted on my Instagram uh, like last week is this Nirvana Incesticide tee. This one and then the heart-shaped box tee are probably the most sought after Nirvana tees. I think probably the heart-shaped box tee is more expensive, um, but this one is definitely really, really sick. It was printed on this like lemon lime colorway. It's kind of like in between a green and a yellow, which is su a super sick color. I don't own anything like that in my wardrobe, but I think it still goes really nicely with white and black, um, like pants and shoes and stuff like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Kurt Cobain did a lot of the graphics for the merchandise and he would like collage images together. So I'm not sure if that's what this image is. I know a lot of the other merchandise they made um, was collages, but I'm not sure if this one was exactly. I'm not really sure what is going on in the graphic, but it kind of looks like there's a puppet being controlled by this um, crab head looking guy and he's holding a rose. It's single stitch as well, so you know it's vintage. And this is actually the giant version. I know there's an anvil tee version, but I prefer giant tees a lot more. They have a better fit and they have a better weight to them in my personal opinion. Fairly certain the anvil tees are from 94 and this one is from 93, so this one's even older. This one is a little bit more expensive. I think I paid around 280 for this one. So very, very pricey for a t-shirt. However, that's actually a really good deal for this t-shirt. I see a lot of these go for anywhere from four to six hundred dollars. On eBay, they're sometimes more than that. So you never know what will happen if you like send a low ball offer. Um, and I'm finally glad I have this t-shirt. It's just such a sick graphic and that color is really nice too. And the last t-shirt I have here to show you guys is actually a Rick Owens tee, uh, but it's still kind of vintage. I don't really know what like vintage really means like how old it has to be but this is from spring summer 2007 so it is like 12 years old now this is actually the blowjob graphic tee and it might be kind of hard to tell but it's super super faded but that's rick owens uh blowing his brains out with a desert eagle and like his brains is like shooting out the back of his head really really sick graphic this is insanely rare too i'm pretty sure that graphic was only printed on t-shirts and then scarves i could be wrong but those are the only items i've seen this graphic on i've been looking for a t-shirt with this graphic on it for probably like two years now and i've only ever seen one pop up and that's this one so i had to buy it instantly this is a size medium and i'd say it fits like a large in my opinion it's kind of oversized really boxy for a rick owens tee normally they're just really really long um, but this one's actually not too long. Unfortunately, this t-shirt was made very, very thin. Like, you can see my fingers through it. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you can see my fingers through it. Um, so it is kind of sheer in those regards, which I'm not really a big fan of, but it is a really sick tee nonetheless. It's kind of like a good collector's piece. Um, on the back side, it has the side seam. The side seam actually looks like it goes diagonally a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if this was tailored. I don't think so. I think it's actually supposed to go diagonally. It has the Rick Owens, like, motif right there. It kind of looks like there's a patch put in the t-shirt right there. 
that's actually just the Rick Owens tag, which is kind of like an interesting placement for the, um, the dark shadow tag. And then like a lot of Rick Owens pieces from this time, they have the little string thing that hangs down off the back of the neck. I might have to let it go because it is kind of sheer and I'm not really a big fan of thin t-shirts. So if you guys are interested in this, just message me and maybe we can work out a deal. And then moving into a couple pairs of shoes, I kind of realized that a lot of my shoes aren't really meant for summer. They're kind of like, they're kind of like grail status shoes, you know, you don't want to wear them every single day. And so I want some basic, uh, very affordable shoes I can wear with any outfit. And I actually bought two pairs and they are the Converse Jack Purcells. I got the black colorway right here and I got a white colorway right here. I bought them brand new from Converse. I think they were like 60 or $65 each. So very, very affordable. In my opinion, these are just a little bit better than the 70s, like Chuck Taylor Lowe's, I think it was. I think the main detail that I really like about these ones is the black toe cap. It's like a little stripe in the front of the toe. And it's just kind of like an interesting design element that you don't really see on other pairs of Converse, which is something that I like. And actually Undercover did their own kind of rip of these shoes. And they had like a more pronounced uh, black toe cap thing. And the main reason how I found out about these is actually from the Stotts Ballet lookbook. They had, uh, they had like a tan pair of these. It just looks so cool in all the photos. So I ended up picking up two pairs um, to try them out and they're very, very comfortable. They go with so many outfits. I haven't been wearing the white ones too much, but I definitely need to beat them in just cause they are like still a pure cocaine white. And yeah, those are just some of my pickups in preparation for summertime. Next up, I'm gonna grab my phone over there. We're gonna do some questions and answers. First question is, what is your favorite piece ever in your closet? Um, I'm not really actually too sure, but I'm gonna go hop in my closet and find something. Okay, so I've returned, and I think that these are probably my favorite thing in my closet right now. These are the 1985 Jordan 1s in the neutral gray colorway, which is a very, very rare colorway. They've never re-released them. Um, there's such a simple colorway too. It's white and gray, it goes with anything. With the yellowed sole too, such a cool shoe. Put a little bit of a flexible epoxy on the bottom. I'm not sure if the light's gonna pick it up. So they should hold up for another few years, hopefully. But yeah, I think this is my favorite piece in my wardrobe right now. Next question from the same guy is, how is the brand coming along? When should we expect the first collection? So he's actually referring to my personal brand, Colette Hyatt. If you guys don't already follow the Instagram for that brand, you should definitely go follow it. I'll have it on the screen right here. Um, whenever I post information about it, I usually post it there first. Coming along very, very good. Things are gonna wrap up very soon and then I'm gonna launch. And you can expect the first collection to be released this month. So hopefully before June. June is like my deadline. I wanna get it out the door before June. I'm still waiting on a few items to be delivered and then it's just kind of prep time for launch. So definitely expect a lot more information to be posted about it in this coming month and it'll be released probably at the end of the month, maybe like the last day of May or maybe a couple days before the end of May, but definitely 100% in this month. Next question is, will you ever do Photoshop tutorials? Uh, my quick answer to that is no, I don't think I'll ever be doing a Photoshop or Illustrator type tutorial, just because there are other channels that do graphic design tutorials and how to use those programs. And this channel, even though I am a graphic designer by trade and that's like how I make my money, that's not what I want this channel to be about. This channel is mainly about fashion. Yeah, my quick answer is no. Next question is, what pieces will be part of the first Colette Hyatt drop? Um, I guess I'll tell you guys now since you'll be seeing it very soon. I have hats, which will be the most affordable thing in the whole collection. I have, um, I have like a leather side bag thing that I've definitely shown off in some of my Instagram posts. So you can like look through um, my post from the past few months and you'll probably see it a couple times there. I have the brown cathedral hoodie. I have another colorway of the cathedral hoodie, which I like the same amount, if not even more actually. Um, but I don't want to reveal what it is just yet. You'll see it in the product photos. And I have the cathedral sweater, which I've teased a little bit here and there. And I have a pair of pants, which are easily my favorite pair of pants in my wardrobe right now. Like they're, they go with so many outfits, such a cool fit. They have like lots of unique design details. So yeah, there's a good variety. No t-shirts in this first drop. I might do t-shirts later down the line. This was supposed to be like a late winter, early spring collection, but things just take so long sometimes. And unfortunately it's gonna be released like at the beginning of summer. So hopefully you guys are still interested in hoodies and sweaters. A lot of brands do release that stuff. So I'm not really too worried about that. But yeah, after this first collection, I am definitely gonna be moving towards single item releases and instead of a whole collection. Just because organizing a whole collection for a release takes so much time and a lot of money too. And it'd be so much easier if I can just do single item releases. So, so that's kind of like the future of my brand too. Next question is, did you go to college? And if you did, do you feel a noticeable benefit from going? 
try to answer this one quickly. I'm still in college currently. I'm finishing up my third year in just a couple weeks. Um, and I have one more year to go. But yes, I definitely have noticed a benefit from going. If I hadn't gone, I wouldn't know how to design a collection. I wouldn't know how to design clothes in general. Going to school isn't for everybody, that's for sure. Um, but I think it was the right choice for me. Learning how to make tech packs, learning how to create CADs and flats for clothing, knowing just how to do fashion sketches is really, really important as well. And then knowing the ins and outs about like fabric choices and just like all the different types of fabric and dyeing processes and printing is very, very useful. So yes, I have definitely noticed a benefit from going. Are you straying away from archival fashion or will you be mixing in with your current style? I'm definitely not straying away from archival fashion. I'm super into Rick Owens right now. I'm super into Undercover. I think I just took a little bit of a break from it just because I had so many archive pieces at one point. I just wasn't really liking my wardrobe. So I kind of wanted to hit refresh and try out this avant-garde style that I want to incorporate with Archive. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying that they miss the Archive, Owen. I definitely still like Archive stuff. I don't know why people are saying that. But yeah, I will definitely be picking up more Archive pieces soon. It's just about finding the right pieces. What industry sparked your interest in fashion? Um, I think there's two reasons why I got interested in fashion or just like design in general. One is that both my parents are architects, so they've been really into art design and that's kind of how I learned how to draw in the first place. They weren't really interested in dressing cool per se, but they are interested in fashion. The second reason why I got interested in fashion is through cosmetics and video games. I was really really big into video games, especially Team Fortress 2. I loved like all the hats and cosmetics in that game and I had a pretty big like inventory collection too. This is probably like seven or eight years ago, so a very very long time ago. I was really into like customization and all that stuff, so I kind of like applied my knowledge from that to here and also to buying and selling clothing. Very, very helpful to know how to trade in that game. My trading knowledge in that game was very, very useful in like building a big collection and knowing how to buy and sell and negotiate. So yeah, I think those are the two reasons. Can you talk about what inspired your tattoos? They look so, I'm assuming that says sick. I was actually thinking about making a tattoo video. If you guys want to see something like that, um, maybe get this video to like 700 likes. I know I don't normally ask for likes, but you guys can hit that number that shows that there's a big interest in me making a video like that. Just because tattoo videos aren't really fashion related, so I don't know how well it would do. But yeah, I am really into tattoos right now, and a lot of people have been asking me um, like where I get them done, how I find the images, um, can I show them off in a video showcase type thing. So if you guys are interested in that, 700 likes and I'll make that video. How did you find out about Kale Christian Powell and the whole avant-garde following? I think initially I was introduced to avant-garde clothing and just CCP in general from Avery Ginsberg. Um, he was like the first fashion YouTuber I think that was kind of introducing um, that whole spectrum of fashion onto YouTube and that's kind of how I discovered it. I did really like that style when I first saw it, however I wasn't really interested in um, like investing money into building a wardrobe like that at that point. I feel like the avant-garde style is very mature and I wasn't really at that point yet. Like, I still want to be experimental with fashion. I was still very experimental with um, fashion choices uh, when I like first got into archive and stuff like that. Then I got really interested in um, CCP and avant-garde when I kind of like matured a little bit, when I kind of realized that a lot of the clothes I had, I don't wear on a day-to-day -day basis. I paid closer attention to Jacob Hetzer and Garrett Wilson. I've been following them for, I think I've been following Garrett Wilson for like close to a year and Jacob for probably like three years now. I always really appreciated their style. It was just a little bit too mature for me back then. But now I just think that avant-garde really fits me. I definitely don't want to be dressing in CCP head to toe. That's not really what I'm interested in at all. There's just like a, one pair of pants, a couple leather jackets, and then a couple pairs of boots that I'm really, really interested in from CCP. And that's kind of like my limit. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to be dressing head to toe CCP anytime soon. So that's all the questions I had for the Q&A. The next portion is just going to be music favorites. I will play snippets of five of my favorite songs from the past month. So let's get into that right now.
gonna do it for my monthly favorites of April. Let me know what you guys thought of all this stuff down in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear your opinions. If you guys enjoyed this video or you wanna see a tattoo video coming up very soon, leave a like on the video down below. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps me out so much. I think we're close to 16,000 or was it 17,000? I don't really remember anymore. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Peace out. Have a good day. See you next time.